Many of the ideas come from his couture collection, and you know, he's favorite on the red carpet in Hollywood. It's all about lightness and free spirit and airiness. It was super chic, but also very approachable in, a, in an everyday sort of way for women. I'm very interested to make femininity sexy, but very easy. As we sit here at the Armani show and, and as Teatro begins to fill, you know, you're never quite sure what we're going to see from Mr. Armani, certainly with the 90s on everyone's mind and seeing a lot of interesting cuts of jackets and seaming. Great jackets because it's part of really what Mr. Armani brought to fashion many years ago and the idea of fluidity. You know, I think back to collections when I was very young where he was doing beautiful tailored jackets and from beneath would be gorgeous shirts that would be in organza and in chiffon that fluttered away from the tailored pieces. So that whole play of hard and soft is very much part of the Giorgio Armani vernacular. He has such a distinct and classic style, but you know, I mean, I've been in the business a good few years and I remember it looking amazing on Sophie Loren and those kind of people, but now you're seeing the younger generation wearing it and it still looks fabulous. I just saw a picture of Lauren Santo Domingo the other day in an amazing beige suit and it's Armani and I think it's interesting to see how they're wearing it now and making it look great. Of course, evening wear here is always superlative. Many of the ideas come from his couture collection, and you know he's favored on the red carpet in Hollywood and many openings. The glamour pieces here are always over the top. He loves a gorgeous beaded gown, and he knows how to do it like no other. The makeup is very effortless skin we feel like you don't wear any makeup, but you look like to die for. It's a little bit of foundation, concealer, very little powder, very important. You just powder the T-zone. You keep the cheek very fresh. You do a mix of blush between pink and coral, peachy color, little bit of contour. You highlight the eyes with a creamy, shimmery, kind of gold eyeshadow, white pencil inside the eyes, and the touch of makeup, of fashion, of trend, of color is the lips. I call it like a burn orange color. So I apply a very orangey but transparent lipstick and I powder it afterward with a, like a pastel orange and that creates a very subtle but strong lipstick. That's really color on the face. The clothes are always modern, chic, sophisticated, fashionable, and timeless at the same time, and the quality is fantastic.
My inspiration came from a film that was actually done in the 1970s, but I only watched it last summer. I just fell in love with the cinematography of it. It's gorgeous, it's amazing. It's called Zabrinsky's Point. And the director, his name is Michelangelo Antonini. Oh, amazing eye for mood and for color. It's absolutely stunning. Actually, the way the film was shot, it went into the day and then in the evening and at dusk and sunset, and it was all just amazing. So all these references that I actually was inspired from the film at certain points of... It has nothing to do with the message of the film, but it's more of the lighter side of the film. Yeah, so it's all about lightness and free spirit and airiness. Lots of layering, it's volume but without the weight. I love to have feminine things and I like movement and they need to be comfortable so for me that's very important. I love them, yeah, I'm wearing one myself. They're, you know, something, of course, that I've been working with all summer, and it's something that I did for my menswear collection a while ago, and I love them so much I wanted a pair for myself, but of course the men's is men'sy and they don't, they don't fit me. So I recreated the shoe for this collection, and I worked around it, made it a little bit more feminine, and just really coordinates with the collection beautifully. And then just to be comfortable and confident in wherever setting she's in. You know, you could take this tunic, for example, you know, with a little skirt, you can go to the office. I mean, you know, without the skirt, just sandals, a clutch, and you're out for dinner or for an evening out on Saturday night or something. So really, all the clothes are very versatile, and that's what I like about them. I travel a lot. I am a mom, and I work, and I go out, and I have lots of friends, too. And I, that's what I want my clothes. They want them to work for me. Todd's. I thought Alessandra did a most incredible 
collection because she really got that sort of understanding of the ease of Todd's. And that's very difficult to do. She also showed a very pretty collection. I particularly like the masculine-inspired pieces. The pale blue suits were just gorgeous. I love the fact that she played with the classic Todd's bags and made the mini D bag, which I thought was a huge hit. It was a great start. I thought it was great. I was thrilled to see her really come up with the, the total right balance for Todd's. It was super chic, but also very approachable in, a, in an everyday sort of way for women. And I think that starts, you know, from the ground up. Accessories are obviously important at Todd's. She uh, showed most of the collection on flat shoes. So uh, there's a sense of real practicality there but it's very elevated, obviously, because she made things in beautiful leathers. I'm really excited for her, it was a great show. I particularly like the fringe loafers. I thought that was a new take on the classic. And I thought her colour palette was very focused and it seemed her fabrication was really good. She'd, she'd sourced the very soft, softest leathers, as proved by doing a drape dress in, in leather, pink leather. And it was, it was so well done, it could have been silk. You know, It was just keeping the spirit of the house and that great Italian craftsmanship, but at the same time producing these very modern wearable pieces. I'm thrilled that she is, is back designing you know, for a big house again because I think she's so talented and there were some beautiful, beautiful pieces, amazing colors and the leather was like silk. It was, it was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to see what else she comes up with there. Everything has to progress and I, and I think that customer will still get this. It's still going to appeal to, to their woman, so no, I think it's fantastic.
the exciting thing about coming to Italy. You see the amazing things that the factories can do here, and I think it'll be exciting to see what she what she continues to do at Tots. All the girls having a really simple, natural, beautiful wave. The annual wants to look like a really little bit edge to it as well. So basically using just only hairspray on the side and top and using your fingers, push it back. I think if you push it back, it's going to look like just ponytail. So I'm using like more like to the side, so it does have a little bit of a height to make them look the tough. The makeup look today is very natural, but it's like absolute perfection. There's an effortlessness to it. So these girls, you know, they've got plenty of sleep, they're really healthy, and we've used some bases, but we've also left bits of their skin tone natural on the eye. We've played a bit with textures as well, so we've got some gloss on the eyebrow to pick up some light. We've highlighted the cheekbones, the cupid's bow and down the nose, but all of it is just to give a vision of beauty. There's not any kind of big key products or big beauty statements. It's just more about a, a super perfect look, I think. It's all about the construction and deconstruction. So everything is just play on uh, that sense of uh, remake the thing together in different way and try to define a femininity which is very innovative in the same time she look into the future but she like the past as well It's, for me, I'm interested very much in two trends that I think uh, many years I work now. One is the underground chic, means this uh, sophisticated but no show off, that uh, is not my cup of tea. And then uh, I'm very interested to make femininity sexy but very easy, not corset, not anything like that. The woman won't feel free, she won't feel, enjoy the sexiness. White, you know, it's just the color of summer, so you cannot be avoid of uh, white in summer. It's very important. But in the same time, there is this lemon yellow, which uh, bring the um, essence of summer. You know, that uh, beautiful energy that there is summer. There is uh, sexuality, sensuality, everything in this yellow.
Then we have the sand color, which is typical of another sonar. Then there is this uh, worker blue color. and tiny black with silver. So it's, uh, I think, a color that inspired me because they are simple color, but very strong and powerful. want to make the pointy shoe and the sandal but wear a very different approach so they look big in the back but very feminine in the front and that uh, for me was important because I like the first thing that I look in a girl sometimes is a shoe so I have to work a lot on that. <laughs>